So it's talking about the strengths of the fields in the velocity selector of a Bainbridge mass spectrometer. I have no idea what Bainbridge refers to. It might be a type of mass spectrometer. It might be a brand of mass spectrometer. I guess the good news is it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so it's saying velocity selector. So let's say imagine there's a particle moving at some speed v naught. Okay, we are given magnetic field and electric field. And the strength of the magnetic field that separates the ions is that a stream of singly charged uh, lithium ion is found to be bended a uh, circular arc of... Um, ah, I see. So it's a two-step thing. So let me imagine this. Um, let me imagine a large um, experimental region filled with the magnetic field. Um, so let's let's set it up the same as we had before. So um, we have magnetic field pointing into the screen and that's gonna be over a pretty large region. And what we are going to do uh, to ensure that whatever particle enters this region has the correct velocity, this velocity, what we are going to do is we are going to set up a region of electric field like with the two conducting plates so that within this region the net force of magnetic force and electric force is cancelled out. So the particles can go in a straight line, exit this region, and then undergo this uh, circular arc. Um, that's how I'm going to set it up. So let's first figure out the direction of the magnetic force. Um, I'm going to um, for this charge to bend in a correct way, I'm going to have to pretend that it's negatively charged. So when I do V cross B, you know, uh, my uh, hand, whole hand, first in the direction of the first vector, uh, the velocity vector, and orient this until I can curl the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field into the screen this way. Then my thumb points in the direction of V cross B. And I made this charge negative, so the actual force will be downward. Uh, that part will matter uh, for the next part. Uh, for here, uh, what I need to do is I need to say um, this negative charge is going to get pushed downward. So I need to set up an electric field. I need to set up something here, an electric field, either going up or going down. Let me figure out the direction in a bit. But I need to set up the electric field so that the net force while it's in this region is balanced out. So let's think through here. We have a negative charge. Negative charge is pushed or pulled in the direction opposite to electric field. I want the electric force pushing it upward to balance this out. That means I need my field to be pointed downward. So that for negative charges, it will apply upward force. That upward force, electric force of the amount of charge times the electric uh, field that will balance out. These two will balance each other out. Good. And after this exits that region of uh, electric field, then it's under influence of magnetic force only. Then it will follow this uh, circular path. Uh, that's what it's getting at in the second part of the question. But I think, um, and then, you know, figure out the mass of the thing. So I feel like we should do this in two steps. Since we have a velocity selector, let's first uh, solve this for the velocity somehow. And once we have that, then we can use that uh, velocity to figure out, okay, for this thing, moving at that velocity, what mass does it have to be so that it completes the circular arc of the radius that's described, uh, radius of, let's say, 2.3 centimeters. So let me write this out first. You have amount of charge times E is equal to, and let's write this out as a magnitude. Amount of charge times V cross B, the magnitude of V cross B is uh, V B sine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. The way I set this up, velocity and magnetic field will be perpendicular. So this will just be one. So I can write down the magnetic um, force portion as amount of charge times Vb, uh, no sine theta, because sine theta will be 1. So once I have that written out, I see some nice cancellations. Charge cancels out. So as far as velocity selection is concerned, I don't care about how much charge it carries. Solving for V, I get nice and easy. Uh, v 
is equal to uh, E divided by B. It might be surprising, but let me just show with a demonstration that the division of this quantity uh, with this quantity actually gives you meters per second. Let me do that in Wolfram Alpha. Since it knows units, it can do something like 1 times 10 to the power of 5 uh, volt per meter. That's the electric field. And divided by the magnetic field, 0 0.75 Tesla. It gives me an answer in meters per second. One of those is meters per second. And let me just write this out. So I just found the velocity of the particle. It's 133,000 meters per second. Pretty slow in the microscopic world. So this is very small fraction of speed of light. Um, so I'm going to treat V from here on as a known quantity. I worked out the numerical answer. I can just use it wherever I want. So the... Um, the strength of the magnetic field, okay, so I think uh, um, the strength of magnetic field actually changes. So um, I have the region here, uh, here, where the magnetic field strength is actually is a different quantity uh, of this, 0 0.6 Tesla. So let me call that B naught, 0 0.6 Tesla. And the magnetic field here, let me call that by a different uh, letter. Call it B1. And I need to rework my <laughs> velocity. It's going to be that divided by the magnetic field within the velocity selector, 0 0.6 Tesla. That will give me the velocity of 167,000 um, meters, 167 thousand meters per second good and then uh, for this part now i use the different magnetic field value of 0 0.75 tesla so from here uh, i guess we can reuse the formula that we derived in the other question so in the other question we looked at this circular motion we said that for this circular motion to occur there must be a centripetal force of mv squared over r and um, this centripetal force is coming from the magnetic force on the particle as it's going around, which is Q V cross B. Or in the case where velocity vector and magnetic fields are perpendicular, Q V P. So I'm setting this equal to that. Um, uh, you know, V squared, one of the factors cancels out. And solving for, I guess now N, uh, solving this for m, this is what I get. m is, I have v over r, move that over, so that'll be q b r over v, um, and that's it. I think I have some sense of what all these values are. b is my b1, this number here. q is, it says a singly charged lithium ion, so this is going to be equal to um, the elementary charge, e. And the um, Let's see. Yeah, I think that's all the parameters. I have everything else. Let me plug in the numbers. So we have um, elementary charge times B1, which is 0 0.75 Tesla, times the radius of the circular arc, 2.3 uh, centimeter. It will convert that to basic SI units for me. All of that divided by the velocity, which we worked out, 167,000 meters per second. Hopefully, we are getting unit of kilogram, because if we don't, I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, we are getting it in unit of kilogram. That's great. Power of 10 to the minus 26. Matching power. Good. So it should be 1.65 times 10 to the minus 26 kilogram. 